So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough today today to show you what you're going to get out of the box, um, how everything functions, and just some basic information. But just know that, um, you know, currently we're, uh, the schedule ship date is next week, um, you know, June 16th, Monday. That's when we will begin shipping these units out to the customers. We will also release a more official, more in-depth demo video, as well as some promo promo video and all that stuff and also the the more most up-to-date um owner's manual will also be posted on the website okay but uh without further ado um i'm gonna walk you guys through how this thing functions you know what you're gonna get so first things first when you get the box obviously you know the, the, um you're gonna you're gonna get the unit there's no hose there's no torch it's an induction annealer and when you open it, there's gonna you know there's gonna be an included manual. It is a water cool system, so you will also get this box, um, the water uh, reservoir, in with your unit, and inside the box is your. So this is the standard wheel. It's very similar to our um, flame annealer. It's you know this hat, uh, except it's double notched to improve feeding speed and all that stuff. So this this has a 12 and a half millimeter opening. So you will support cases up to 308, um, you know, six by three more and so on. And here, right here is the Magnum uh, wheel. It's inside this box. So with the Magnum wheel, you will be able to anneal cases uh, up to 338 Lapua. And of course, like everything else, prior to turning on the machine, annealing and so on, always test you know test the function to ensure that um you know it is feeding reliably and all that stuff you're using the correct wheel you're using the correct caliber um you know multi-caliber disc slots and we will go over more details on that and here's the you know here's what we're what we're using right so we can use distilled water um, or you can, you know, we recommend using some, you know, uh, some kind of coolant, right, for better performance. This is what we're using. This is what we got off Amazon. Um, you can use any PC type coolant. Um, but this is what we're using here. Seems, to, you know, seems to have all the ingredients and everything that we're looking for. And yeah, you know, just fill, fill it up. And, um, you know, if you don't have coolant, distilled water will work as well. Although the coolant will work better at regulating the, you know, the heat, uh, the heat on the coil, maintain the, you know, a certain temperature, um, but the still water will work as well. Okay, so let's quickly go over the rear of the machine. So on the back of the machine, you will see that there's an in hose and an out hose. So when you take your water reservoir, there's a, again, an in and an out. So you connect the in to the in, right? So that's, um, you know, and then you connect the out hose to, to the out and when the hose first comes there's these plugs in there just you know you got to remove them before you uh, push them in there and when you install them just make sure they're pushed all the way in they're pushed all the way in they're fully secured and, and that's really much it okay so that's the back of the machine pretty straightforward and the other thing that you gotta look out for is the um, the voltage input okay so before, um, you know, for in the U.S., obviously, we'll flip it to 115, right? And we plug it into a 115, 120 outlet, and you should, you know, you'll be fine. And But if you're in Europe, Australia, whatever it is, um, you know, if you have this switch to 115 and you plug it into a, you know, higher output outlet, you will fry the machine, okay? So double check these... Um, you know the the you know the the voltage input before use just as it says here so just make sure you're plugging and you know this is on the correct setting before you plug it in All right the bottom of the machine has rubber legs um right and they're you know they're, they're not tilt adjustable because they're not necessary on this machine like our flame annealer so they're not tilt adjustable um you know and but on the bottom you'll find that there are holes so, you know, we built the machine where obviously it's a water cool system. Um, these hoses should last a very long time. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, things won't ever break. You know, you just never know. Uh, so we make sure that, 
you know, the, you know, where the water is going in, where, you know, or what, you know, the way we put together the components inside there, uh, we try to avoid, you know, water being, you know, water going on top of these components and potentially damaging it. So, um, but, you know, but at the same time, we also want to make sure that you can detect if there is a water leak. So, you know, we have holes on the bottom of these units and they, obviously they are lifted, you know, for two reasons. One is, again, for heat dispersion. And number two is if there is a water leak, they will come out one of these holes and you will see them on your table. And obviously at that point, um, you know, identify where the leaks are. Is it the hose? Is it the machine or whatever it is? And address the issue, you know, give us a call, address the issue um, through our one year of, you know, one year plus of testing, um, torture testing and all that stuff. We have not, um, observe any leaks, you know, any, any issues. Uh, that's not saying it will never happen, but so, you know, obviously we built this in here just to make sure that, Hey, if, if there is the water's not con collecting in there and you can identify it. Okay. Okay. So let's go over the top of the machine. So there's a six station prep center. Each power by is individual high torque motor. Uh, replacement for those are very easy. Uh, so, you know, six station that should allow you to do pretty much everything you need to do. Um, you know, chamfer deeper, ream, uniform, brush. Um, now you can do everything in one operation. So that's pretty straightforward. And, you know, the power, you know, on the top, you'll find the, you know, the, the power switch, water pump switch, and also the uh, speed controller. Okay, so the case prep center and kneeler, they don't operate at the same time. It's, it, they're powered on by a three-step three, uh, three step, uh, power button. In the middle, obviously, is off. And position one is the annealer. And position two is the case prep center. Okay, so you turn the case prep center on. And the power, prep center power is on. Okay? Uh, but you look at the annealer, it's not running, right? So this only turns on the prep center. All right, so I turn it off. Now I switch it to the annealing function, but before I switch it to annealing function, if I'm just testing function on the machine, see how the wheel turns, how things, uh, how things are feeding, I want to make sure the water pump is off because the, uh, the coils will not activate, which means it will not heat the brass or the coil is not active if the water pump is off. It's a safety feature, right? To ensure that it's not, you know, unless there's water running, preventing overheating, safety issues, and also allow you to test function of the machine. Cause we like to play around with it. So which wheel it is, is it feeding correctly? And while we're doing that, we don't want the coils heating. Okay. So you can do that with a water pump off. So I'll turn it to the annealing function, right? So now it's heating, the light turns on. Okay, and you can, obviously the speed controller will allow you to adjust the annealing speed, the annealing time, annealing speed, and obviously the, how fast the brass case feeds. So now, you know, once you're ready to begin annealing, um, you know, you test it all, you know, you have the correct um, multi-caliber wheel, you have the correct size wheel, you test, you know, you test fed about 20 cases, everything looks good. Now, let, you know, the stacker brass, that's begin annealing, right? You can start from zero, so the wheel doesn't move. Press, an, you know, press anneal, zero, wheel doesn't move, stacker brass, and when you're ready to go, you can turn this on and the machine will begin running. Okay, let's look at other parts of the machine. So it's a gravi you know, gravity-based auto fee system, and this is what we mean, right? So we turn it on, let's turn it to 100, okay? And it's not heating, water pump's not on, okay? Okay, that's kind of how it works. You know, and here's a multi-caliber um, disc, right? That will fit. As you can see, there's different size holes. Uh, so here's the um, here's the, our recommendation, right? Here's the the smallest hole, and if you do it counterclockwise, second, third, fourth being the largest. 
But our recommendation is, look, the smallest hole, if we look closely, it's a perfect fit, but without much wiggle room for even the 223. So we don't recommend the smallest hole, even though it fits for the 223. So what happens is, well, as you're feeding down the chute, part of it will be inside the, the case. And especially if you have something like 300 blackout. Uh, heat migration transferring down to the bottom of the case, uh, that can happen very quickly, right? Um, so then now, this being a poly you know, polymer-based wheel, it won't you know, damage it, but you will see some parts of it melting. It will still be functional, but nonetheless, is if you know if it gets too close, if it's touching, uh, that heat might you know for shorter cases with heat migration, you will see some melting on on the side of you know these holes. So when you're selecting this, just make sure that there you know it's okay if that you know there's th that it has some space as long as long as it's not so big that it's tilting like leaning sideways. A uh, little bit is okay, as long as it's within the coil, right? So for two through three, I would use the position two. So play around with it. Make sure you have sufficient space. Make sure that the case is not leaning or touching against uh, this hole, right? And if it is, if it looks a little bit too close, just select the next biggest okay. one. So once you have, you know, you determine which which of the hole you're going to use. And as I mentioned, for two through three, we'll use the second one. It seems to work the best. Uh, and at that point, you know, we'll, you know we'll, we'll put one in there and make sure this height is properly adjusted. You know, if we look at it right here and you can look, you know, kind of look through it as well. The, the neck, you know, the shoulder of the case isn't exactly, you know, isn't exactly inside the coil and you can play around with it. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and adjust the case, right? So this thing will allow you to make, you know, it's height adjustable allow you to make height adjustments, um, the kneeling again, 6BR, 300 blackout, all the way to 338 Lapua, 300 wind mag, and just make sure the, the case is, you know, it, um, the, you know, the shoulder part is about, you know, a little bit past the, the bottom of the coil, right? And then you can look at the results, heat it, and see how you like it. And then once you, once you um, got, got the position you want, just simply lock it in, okay? And, once we do that, we go back to what we were doing earlier. We selected the right cal uh, caliber disc. We adjusted the height correctly. And now let's test feed it. And again, it is a gravity based auto fee system uh, anything with gravity things happens so just again you know just because it's not a flame you know a torch annealer uh, don't feel like you can just you know with anything 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 that we're heating um, anything reloading we want to keep an eyes on it so just make sure um, you know you, you know even as, as this thing is running you're keeping an eye on it make sure everything is feeding correctly um, you know as it's feeding down here in very rare cases, um, almost never with two through three, right? It, it may get stuck right here, um, you know, in some rare cases, and, you know, it, you know, especially if there's, you know, uh, over time, if it gets dirty and if this part gets a little rough uh, with carbon, uh, obviously clean it, you know, clean it to make sure it's nice and smooth. But sometimes, you know, if it, you know, one, once, you know, with, with, with uh, use, let's just say it gets stuck. You want to obviously clear that jam, right? Um, but again, that's that, you know, that's a very rare occurrence, but it, it's not saying that things like that will not happen. Okay. So just make sure you're monitoring it. So you don't have a bunch of cases stacked up here, or, you know, if anything jammed up, you know, jammed down here, here, that's the important part. If something is jammed down here, the coil will continue to heat that piece of brass until it melts. Right. So if you ever have a jam, what one of the first thing you want to do is either switch off the machine completely to the off position or switch off the water pump. Either way. Right. Switch off one of these um, and then the, yeah, the heating coil will stop heating and allow you to um, clear whatever issue you're having. Now we have 20 cases here, 22 through three cases here. We got our wheel set up. We, you know, we test function. We, you know, make sure everything is going to run correctly. You know, we have a stopwatch. 
right? So normal two through three cases, um, you'll find that, you know, with other annealers, you you know, it takes them six, you know, six, seven seconds, up to nine seconds to anneal uh, a single case. Uh, but ours, it's under three, you know, three seconds, right? And for two through three, we're going to use setting 100, which is the fastest rotation speed. And let's, um, let's, you know, so once the first case drops into, you know, the, the coil, we'll start timing it and let's uh, see uh, how long it takes to kneel 20 cases. So in this case, I'm going to turn on the water pump. Okay. First, um, and I'm only doing, you know, normally I would turn on the annealer and then the water pump, but it's up to you. But in this case, I'm trying to time it. Um, so let's, um, let's do that. And I'm going to power on the annealer. Okay. Okay, there you have it. 20 cases in under, just right under, just about a minute. Okay, so it's a little bit less, about two, almost three seconds, um, pretty much three seconds each case. Extremely fast, at least double the speed of any other solutions out there. And, you know, it's a very simple solution. You, st you know, you stack the case, select the select the right, the right wheel, the right, you know, um, you know caliber disc, Make sure everything fees and functions, adjust your height, and let it fly. Any questions, let us know. This th these things will begin shipping again on the 16th. Um, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. The introductory pricing deal will end on the 16th. So take advantage while that deal lasts. And yeah, and um, that's about it.